Wait, Yael, didn't you just put out a video about unschooling? Do unschoolers actually use curriculum? The short answer to that is yes. In my case, we do implement some curriculum just to kind of help the exploration that we're already doing. And so what I'm gonna be sharing with you is some of the things that we like to use to practice our math skills on a daily basis. There are four categories when it comes to what the curriculum will cover for first grade. The first category is number sense, and that's just being able to do simple and basic operations like adding and subtracting. Then we have geometry and measurement, and finally, time and money. This is the main curriculum that we use. It's Dimensions Math by Singapore Math, and I went ahead and purchased the entire set, which encompasses a textbook, a teacher guide, and a workbook for 1A and then 1B. And from my understanding, I believe that 1A is supposed to be for the first half of the year and then 1B is for the second half of the year. But know that you, as with any curriculum, you can go at your own pace. This curriculum is so organized and well laid out and I really love the pacing as far as introduction of concepts for my child. Now I will say this curriculum is geared toward a classroom setting, but a lot of the activities are really easily adaptable for homeschool as well. Plus there's a lot of free online resources that you can download and use that go along with the curriculum. While Dimensions is our main curriculum, we do use other books and resources to practice different skills. And this one right here is another one that we use. It's called Building thinking skills. The overall goal of this book is to help the child understand different attributes when it comes to similarities and differences, classifications, descriptions, analogies, and so much more. Along with this book, there are attribute blocks that we use, and that is something that my daughter absolutely loves because again, she is a more hands-on, tactile, kinesthetic learner and so anything that we can incorporate that has to do with manipulating objects she is all for that another great book that you can get to practice logic and specifically deductive thinking skills is this mind benders book and essentially what the child will do is they give you a grid like this as you progress the grid gets bigger and it asks specific questions and clues and this and the child has to use deductive reasoning to figure figure out the puzzle, the riddle. Now I'm gonna share with you some of the manipulatives and activities that my daughter uses to practice her math skills in the four different categories. So when it comes to number sense, we like to use a variety of different manipulatives and here are just a few. We have unifix cubes, pom-poms, buttons, and these like glass gem bead things that we got from Joann's. And as you can see, I have the base 10 frame. I have two of them here. And this is something, again, that I printed from the direct resource from Dimensions Math online. And this is reflective of one of the problems that are in her book. And so you can change this out for any type of manipulative, but it's nice to use these unifix cubes because it matches the color of what's in the book. Another way that we practice our addition and subtraction is I will put up a number bond and my daughter will grab these really cool wooden tiles. They're like Scrabble tiles, but they have numbers on them. And she will put together different problems and equations that reflect the number bond. So this is another little game that we like to play. This actually came out of another curriculum that my daughter had from her previous school. What I did was I laminated the cards and I used this as part of our unit study for bugs, remember that? What the child will do, each one will take turns picking up the card and then they need to count and identify what the number is in base 10. What number is this, Sayla? Uh, Great. So for the number seven, she'll look on her card and she will place the insect on the correct equation that equals to seven. So which equation? Very good. So then you put a butterfly or whatever insect you like on that number. It's fun because she gets to play with her younger sister who is just learning to recognize these different numbers. And this is a great way to incorporate both kids at their different learning levels in this one math game. 
So really when it comes to that bingo game, you can go ahead and use whatever manipulatives that you want for that. You can use Cheerios or goldfish even and have the kids eat their winnings. The other thing that you can do is you can use whatever figurines or manipulatives that you have for a unit study and use that as part of your theme as well. So this is another activity that we use for number sense. And it's really great because it does grow with the child. And as you can see here, it has different objects on different cards that the child can count. But then we have cards like this where they can add, and then there's also subtraction cards. It's a self-correcting puzzle. So when the child goes to add the number and they get it wrong, so let's say, they add and they try to put 10 on this one when it's eight. It's not going to fit, but the proper number will. This is another activity that we will do. It's a one pager from JDA's binder printables and I'll link that below. It's free. What we do on a weekly basis is I will give my daughter a number. She will write down the number, check if it's even or odd. She'll do her tally marks, write it in word form, expanded form, one more, one less, 10 more, 10 less, so on and so forth. And then she'll figure out how to divvy up the number when it comes to the ones, the tens, the hundreds, thousands, and so on. In addition to this sheet, we have these place values. So they're in groupings of 10, 100, and ones. And Sometimes we'll pull this out and she'll use that as a way to kind of keep visual track of what the number is. Next, we have this little money count activity that we'll do and I just give my daughter a little bin that has a couple of dimes, nickels, quarters, and pennies in it and then she has to calculate how much of each value she has and then starting from the largest number going down to the least, she calculates the value. So you'll notice that the My Money Count activity does have a cap when it comes to adding up certain values. We don't go past the quarter yet. But I did that intentionally because I wanted her to master these values so that she can really fully grasp how they will relate to higher values like $1, $5, etc. And then the activity will evolve as she does. So this is what we use to practice time. We have this little analog clock. It has a little flap on the back so you can prop it upright. And then the child will just turn the blue arrow which is the big hand and that will get them to the correct time. The way that we incorporate this into our day is we have this sheet that we'll do and it's our calendar and it talks about the weather, the seasons, how she's feeling and then we have the clock on the bottom here. She'll grab this little clock, then she'll go to the larger clock that's in our schoolroom on the wall and she will figure out what time it is and write it down on this sheet. Now I'm gonna show you some different activities we like to do to practice geometry. So first we have geo boards. These are plastic and they come with rubber bands and I believe a set of six of these boards. The child can make different shapes and patterns and you can also get pattern cards. Some geo boards do come with pattern cards. This one unfortunately didn't, but the kids do like manipulating the rubber bands and the rubber bands do come in different sizes and colors. And so that's always fun to make different shapes and patterns. Next we have the these black pattern cards that I bought separately and it accompanies this plastic pattern blocks and I love this activity for the kids they really do enjoy matching up the blocks and creating these beautiful patterns if you are doing a unit study you can find free printables of things like this where the child will then use it use these blocks to create different patterns. For this one, it was our dinosaur unit. Oftentimes, the, the kids will definitely take this and they'll create their own patterns and that's a great opportunity to talk about the different shapes and how they came together. Another great fun activity are magnetiles or magnet blocks. These admittedly are not real magnetiles, but they, they are a different version and they work the same way. So the child has an opportunity to just make different geometric shapes and buildings, cars, all kinds of different things. If you have been carefully following along in this video, you'll notice that we didn't really talk too much about measurement, but that's simply because we haven't really gotten there in our curriculum yet. 
Once we do, I'll be sure to share some details about the different activities that we're implementing. So do me a favor and also follow me on IG because I do share a lot of activities on that platform as well. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope that you gained some great insights from this video. If you have enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a great big thumbs up, a like, and subscribe, ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Take care, be blessed, and I'll see you in the next one.